So we have two million people coming in this fiscal year illegally. And the first thing they do is violate federal law when they step foot in the United States. The second right. thing they do is violate federal law when they reside here. And often, until this administration, the third thing they do is have identification that justifies or protects them when asked, fraudulent uh, social security number or driver's license, et cetera. So they conflate the two. Let's just take away illegal immigration right. and look at legal immigration. We take more legal immigrants than any country in the world, unless you say, well, Saudi Arabia has guest workers that go back and forth. So already we are the most liberal country in the world uh, as far as immigration. Everybody knows that. But what people do is, because they have other agendas, uh, whether they're corporate people and want cheap labor, whether they're ethnic groups that want an identity politics base, whether they want to change the electorate for the Electoral College, whether they're Mexico or they want reparations, excuse me, remissions, 60 billion for Central America and Mexico per year from people who are mostly on subsidies in addition to their wages to send back to Mexico. Right. Maybe they want a safety valve so revolutionaries go north rather than march on a racist Mexico City. Whatever the reason is, uh, people realize that illegal immigration <laughs> benefits people, benefits people, but it does not benefit the citizen, the middle class. Legal immigration does. In this compelling video, renowned historian and political commentator Victor Davis Hansen discusses the complex issues surrounding illegal immigration and its impact on America. Hansen dives into the staggering statistics, with 2 million people entering the country illegally this fiscal year alone. He critiques how various groups with specific agendas, from corporate entities seeking cheap labor to ethnic groups aiming to shift the electorate, exploit illegal immigration for their benefit, often to the detriment of American citizens, particularly the middle class. Join Victor Davis Hansen as he provides a thought-provoking analysis of immigration, societal changes, and the political landscape in America. So when you have a multiracial country and people are naturally tribal. You can use coercion like the Soviet Union did or the Ottoman Empire or the Roman Empire or you can try to be a democratic consensual country or you can do like the Yugoslavia. Remember how that worked out or Rwanda or you can be consensual like India and Brazil. It doesn't work out that great. We're the only one that's trying it. If you Peter Robinson right. says I love Japan it's an ally. I want to be a Japanese citizen and rise high and be a political pundit on Japanese TV and run for office. Zero, Zero chance. Zero. If I say, I love Mexican Mexican people, I do, and I love Mexico, I'm going to go down and be a Mexican citizen and someday be pro. Zero chance. Gringo. Forever. Zero. Okay. So this was a unique experiment. Nobody seems to appreciate that. And Martin Luther King Jr. told us that the content of our character was more important than the color of our skin. So here we are. 50 years after the civil rights movement, and we're retribalizing with complete ignorance of where that trajectory leads in history. It leads to blood and soil violence. It leads to incompetency. It leads to the destruction of meritocracy. In the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal. And in the Constitution, there's not a mention of race at all. So you have these European- so the ideals are latent and finally yes. we live up well, to there's, there's the they're Newman. They've just fought the British, and now they've got this country, and they're half of them, not half, but a quarter of them have slaves, and the other people said, you shouldn't have slaves, and they said, we're going to keep our slaves, and then it's a question, do we want to have another war right after this war? And they said, no. Let's kick that Okay, one so let's do this, but let's work on it. And so they worked on it. They were slow and tardy, but the innate logic of this Constitution is self-criticism and improvement, and we always do that. But now, Speaking to someone who taught 21 years with mostly minority students in classics, I was under the impression that because of economic conditions and innate prejudices, I was going to take Southeast Asian students, Mexican-American students, Mexican national, the diaspora of Oklahoma poor whites, and teach them classics, diction, logic, analysis, English composition, maybe they could read French and history literature and then they were going to have a prep school education at Cal State Fresno and I was going to send them if they wanted to go to med school law and they would be better prepared, racially blind. And it worked. And then all of a sudden I noticed that some of my students were very, very successful. And guess what? The last 10 years I noticed that they started to trill their R's on their names or they put a hyphen with an accent mark or they started to say as a Chicana or as a black person. And I said, where did you get that? you're better educated than a guy from Andover. And they said, well, it pays dividends. 
Mm. And so it, it, that's we're, we're making a retrograde retrogression to a pre-civilized state of mind. We've got two million people in the federal government, and about forty percent of Americans work for some sort of government. And it, from it's from the uh, trivial or the everyday when you're driving down the 99 or I-5 and you see uh, a road construction and there's girders all over the road and there's guys working and you think I could sue that guy it's the most dangerous work site and then you say Caltrans I can't sue them they're the government but if a private contractor did that you I'm could. speaking as a private far farmer right. it's dangerous so as we know from the Soviet Union, when government is everything, you have no power of, of redress. They're saying to us, if you don't want to have a Facebook account and you don't like our censorship and you don't like that we rig certain news stories, or Google is saying to us, I think 85% of the searches, and we know that they calibrate the searches on some kind of the results on political mm -hmm. media, then go somewhere else. Sort of like saying to an African-American in 1950, if you're in Alabama or Mississippi, if you don't like my lunch counter, no, it's a free country. Go to that other lunch counter. And he says, well, there is no other lunch counter. Oh, can't, I can't help that. you there. Right. Yeah, well, if you don't like Facebook, go to another. There is none. You've got a monopoly. You bought out 200 companies. And so they're monopolies. And so there are active uh, economic, social, and political agendas. And we're not the political one. They are the political one. And they have an agenda. And they're using their power and monopolies for a particular political purpose.